Hi, this is Carl the Cobra Frutch, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, brandy sponsored by Spartans Law. Delighted to be joined by Sky Sports' very own Mr. Johnny Nelson, arguably one of my most favourite persons to interview in boxing. Uh, Johnny, we've just had a press conference, got a bit heated up there, which is what we like to see. Savannah's been here before, she came up short. Are you confident she comes through on Saturday night? I am confident she comes through. I think Savannah, she got a little pissed off because she doesn't like this tide to say everything's being given to her and she expected this. I think she, she really takes offence at that. Cruz Desern has done the right thing. She's got to talk Savannah into her kind of dance. She wants Savannah to get pissed off at her. So they have a little tear up, so, so they stood there, so she didn't have to go looking for her. Quite clearly and obviously, technically, the technical, the better boxer is Savannah. It's about tactics, holding your nerve when you get in the ring, make sure you, you, you execute the plan you've been working on. Savannah is now finding a heavier weight, so I think she'll be more effective. Uh, shocks will be more, more, uh, more effective, and she'll, she'll feel more comfortable and realise how much she was taken out of her when she went down to fight uh, Kaluta Shield. I believe, uh, obviously Kaluta is going to be ringside, um, working with us actually. I believe that the plan is, if she got through Cruises and it's about doing a rematch. I believe Savannah will probably say something like, you know what, I'm all right here. You come to me. Come in my world, step in my world. And I believe Clarissa will do that. Uh, so, but she's got to get past the task in hand. And, uh, and this is not an easy fight. This is a tough fight. And so she's got to keep her head, keep her cool. And she's got to, and that, that's how she's got to play it. What does she do differently this fight? And what do you think she's picked up differently and do you, do you expect maybe anything different in terms of how she sets up on Saturday night in the fight with Clarissa? She does this different. She got in the ring with the best female fighter on the planet at the moment. So she tried to adapt to, to, uh, to, to, to what would be the best female fighter on the planet. Instead of doing what she was, she's good at, she boxes well, she draws them in. But, and so she started to try and match, if not, not beat fire with fire. Whereas actually Samana's a good boxer, uh, she's got the reach, she's got the range. Uh, so instead of concentrating on what she could do, she was concentrating on what she had to do to beat uh, Clarissa. And I said after the fight, when she dressed room, I said, you can box better than that. There's a lot more to you than that. So it's not like she boxed, and it wasn't an insult, or meant to be an insult. It was to say, look, you boxed within yourself and you lost on points to the best fight in the world. You can't doubt it now, uh, Clarissa is. So what she do differently now? She, the difference is she's up in weight, so she's heavier, naturally stronger. She does what got her here in the first place, what beat uh, Clarissa in the amateurs, what beat uh, Cruz de in the amateurs. And I mean that boxing IQ, the boxing talent that she has, the technical talent. And if she does that and makes sure that bosses the fight, she wins the fight. If she gets drawn in, like she got drawn in on stage, if she gets drawn in, it's all little, little minute you know, little wind-ups, little little things to get you to get you drawn in. She gets drawn into fighting anything else apart from her style. She loses, so she's got to use her brain, box and bash. Don't try box, back, bash and box. Okay, just moving on now. Talk about a few other topics in boxing. One of those being the heavyweight division. A lot of negativity surrounding the heavyweight division right now. Uh, Frank Warren has done an interview with Talk Sport. He says that Tyson's next opponent is going to be an absolute game changer. Um, but he's also ruled out a potential undisputed fight with Alexander Usyk in December in Saudi Arabia. Johnny, every time I've spoken to you, you've never really jumped on the heavyweight scene, but we are now. Be 100% honest with me, what is your current take on what's going on with Tyson Fury right now? Tyson Fury is the boss. Tyson Fury, what Tyson Fury says goes. Doesn't matter what Frank Warren's telling you, by right, by I'm saying, because sometimes their stories don't match up. It's how Tyson Fury feels about who he fights, when he fights, and if he fights. So when you don't listen to Frank Warren, listen to Tyson Fury. And then when you listen to Tyson Fury, be prepared he might change his mind the next day. Tyson Fury is the boss out of that outfit. So, so when, when Frank's saying it's going to be a game changer, like who? Like who is a game changer? Is it, is it, is it something bar boxing? So, so right now you've got Usyk, you've got, you've got uh, Joshua. You've got Wilder there. These are these are the top three heavyweights in the world that are, are, are where the big money is. 
where the game changes. And if you ain't in that, you want to wet my appetite by telling me something like that. Like who? And so, so okay, I, Johnny, Johnny, let's just say it's not any of those. Right. Who would your ideal opponent be for him? I have no idea. Because Andy far, Ruiz? Because as far as I could be Andy Ruiz, because but as far as I'm concerned, Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world. And, and Tyson Fury is under the impression that boxing started with him and finishes with him, as though, as though there's no other choice. Unfortunately, boxing will carry on with or without him. So, so, and, and his fans, he's got a massive fan base. I believe he's the best out of all of them. And the thing is, the way he's, he's, he's dealing with it, it's like, he doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe he'd beat Usi. You know, and, and I, I don't get it. It, just, it doesn't make sense to me. So again, that tells me that Tyson Fury ain't got, uh, Frank Warner has got no handle, uh, no, no control of Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury controls him. And so it's his call. So if Tyson Fury feels like getting involved in the tournament, then he's in. Right now, he might not feel it. Right now, his pride's hurt because he's not treated like the king he wants to be treated. You know, so, so let's just wait and see. Unfortunately, the heavyweight situation, it's politics of our game that's spoiling the game. All these fighters want to fight each other, but the business side messes it up. And that, that's what I'll always say. It's the businessmen I'll say, well, we don't think that's right for you. Maybe you should do this, that, and the other. Fighters want to fight each other. So I'm not saying any fighter is cowering away from any other fighter. This is the people behind the scene that are not telling the fighter A, B, or C. That, 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 that are not giving them certain information, certain opportunities. So therefore, it looks like certain things are happening. And we, what we saw that with, 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 with Anthony Joshua and, and, and Dylan White. You know, from Dylan White saying, oh, well, on a minute. I didn't say that. Now, all of a sudden, the fight is re being re resurrected, apparently. So, to me, I just think this is when the suits screw the game up. The fighters want to fight. The public want to see fighters fight. The suits screw the game up. Tyson Fury become a two-time world champion in February 2020. Since becoming a world champion, he's fought three times, beating Deontay Wilder, Dillian White and Derek Chisora. My opinion, he's not been active enough, given the fact that we've been through a pandemic, but boxing did continue through the pandemic. Now, you've got to look at the positive sides whilst he's been with Frank Warren. He's become a world champion again. He's been in two big fights with Deontay Wilder, but would you say the negative part of him being with Frank Warren is he's not been as active as he should have been? He's not been as active as he should have been because, you know what, at one point he didn't want to fight again. All of a sudden he wants to fight again. And you've got to th think, the time he had out, look how easily he dispatched out Shazora. You know, look at for the from the time he's been out. Don't think because you don't see him, he's not training, he's not ticking over. He loves boxing's in his blood. That's who he is. He's a fighting man. He's always said that. I'm only using his words. I ain't putting words in his mouth. That's who he is. And again, I say he's the best out of a lot of them. But but consistency. Give the fans, giving the fans, the chance to see him. You know, he's in a he's in a unique position. But he needs to be careful that the the fight game will pass him by. And trust me, when he's done. The fight game's not done, the fight game carries on. And so he needs to understand, it, 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 when it comes to that, he's not the be all and end all, but he's the best out of a lot of them. And so I don't, to admit, it's confusing, because I think, well, I don't get it, man. Now, I believe you're the best. It's, it, what I'm seeing is, it's like you don't believe you're the best. Okay, um, sticking on the heavyweight division, uh, we understand that Joshua versus White who is heading in the right direction. I remember when I interviewed you a few years ago and you mentioned about the gloves are off and you said, there's only been a few times I've sensed real beef, Frotch Groves too, um, Chisora White, and of course Joshua versus White. Now it's a fight that some people are interested in, some people aren't interested in, it's a fight that I'm really interested in. Now. What chance do you give Dillian White of winning that rematch? And does Anthony Joshua need to be the same fighter as he was in the first fight going into his second fight? Neither fighters are the same fighters they were when they fought each other the first time. Both fighters have the scars of war. Both fighters have matured. Both my fighters have, have been, been, been aware of what could happen to them, as, as in being knocked out, as in, be, as in losing. Both fighters have been through the same uh, rough road to where they are now. These two fighters are made for each other. Uh, these two fighters will always put in a good fight. These two fighters, I'm not saying I'm not saying that the result will change or not. What I'm saying is these two fighters will always have that something that will make them raise their game. Um, and, and I think this is that fight. I do hope the fight happens. 
And so will the suit screw this up and say, you know what, we're going to fabricate somewhere this fight don't happen and your not, next fight is in Saudi Arabia against Deontay Wilder because the worst case scenario happens, that's gone. That's blown up, so you've got to wait up. So, uh, but to me, if, you, if you're a world-class fighter, you can afford to do that. Usyk's doing it. Usyk's making his mandatory defense against, uh, against uh, Dubois. You know, he's doing it and still, you know, committed to, to the tournament. And he's not hidden, uh, the fact that he's doing that. Um, but why they do it? I know there's talk about him fighting Ruiz or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen there. No, I just think these are world-class fighters and, and they're, that have been world champion at some point in their career. So act like it. Own that shit, man. If you still think you're capable of being up there at the top, own that shit and say, no, no, I can do this because I believe I'm one of, if not the best fight in the world. Johnny, just one final one before I let you go. Uh, Connor Ben is set to announce a new team to sort of prove his innocence in the whole failed drugs test scandal. Um, we're coming up to sort of nine months now, I believe, since all that blew up with the fight with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Um, yeah, just your thoughts on the whole sort of adding a new team to prove his innocence. I'm struggling, you know, because I think the way Conor Ben has defended himself and fought and fought and fought and fought and fought, I want to believe him. Because this man's put himself in a situation where he's thinking, well, on, you know, he's done everything. He could have paid the finest, but said, you know what, all right, that's me. And this guy's fought tooth and nail to say, to defend himself. So I want to believe him. My problem is this, why is Conor Ben's name the only name we're hearing when he had a team of people around him. So if he's, if he's cheated and taken all this, whatever it is, somebody's given it him. Somebody's given him advice. Somebody, in his t somebody else in his team know. So why is this young man the only person that's suffering the consequences? Why is this young man the only name that's been called? So that's why when he has to try and defend himself, why is he sat there by himself? That's my question. Johnny, you were very fortunate enough to have a great team around you throughout your boxing career. Obviously, uh, the late um, Brendan Ingall. Surely that, when it comes to putting anything in your body, it's down to the fighter and nobody else. Am I correct? I, I understand that, but you know when you do this, you go on a programme. You go on a programme to get you on it and get you off it. That's to, to my knowledge. So I don't, I know, I'm not disrespecting Conor, what I'm saying is this. I don't think he's intelligent enough to know I should take this, this, this and this, then that and that, and then I'll get away with this and nobody will see it. I don't think he has that, that's, he wants to fight. I think he has to have advice on what to take and how to take it and when to take it, if that is the case. Again, my argument is this, why is the only person that's in the limelight when it comes to all this, Conor Ben? It ain't fair. So if he's, he's gonna be, be thrown under the bus, whoever's involved, need, their names need to be mentioned as well. They need to be thrown under the bus as well. They need to suffer the consequences as well. Because this young man in Conor Ben, as far as he's concerned, how he's fought too for now, I'm thinking, you know what? You know, <laughs> and then there's a man, you're, you're arguing your case like an innocent man, I'm thinking, shit. You know, so there's somebody else accountable as well, or if not, somebody else accountable for this situation. It's not right that the only name we're hearing is Conor Ben. Johnny Nelson, passionate as ever, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've got a few more days with you, so don't think this is the one and only interview we're doing. I'm doing something else with you after this, but oh, yeah. Ready, ready, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for talking to Lights Out. Please, anytime. Woo!